Vick at the RBUIC with Kyle Hansen, Rick Hansen. Wait, you guys related? <laughs> yeah, he's my dad. Unfortunately. Well, he's my son. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, God, we got that out of the way. You guys, yeah. you, you guys look thirsty. So uh, while I'm making these for you, tell me a little bit about this J120 No Surrender. Um, what's the backstory on it? I suppose you own it. It's the family boat. Yeah. So we picked up No Surrender. This is our fourth season on it. Prior to the J120, we had a J109, a J80, a J27. So lots of J boats in the family. Put a plug in for those guys. And we picked this one up after doing the Annapolis to Newport on our 109 and said we needed a bigger boat. So we bought this boat out of Annapolis and has a history of doing offshore racing and then continued to uh, build upon what was a good foundation and, and prepared us for this particular event this year. Is this your first time doing it together, father-son combination? Yeah, so I have done one previous Bermuda on a different boat, but this is our first time doing it together and doing it on a boat of our own. Oh, so, awesome. yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I think I should make one for myself. All right, so you got, I mean, if you guys, if you looked at your division, I mean, it's probably one of the tightest divisions, like, on the band of the entire race. Yeah, well, possibly. Right. And it kind of confused us a little bit because we figured there was enough 120s to have our own class or very close to our own start. And then when they mix it up and threw in 122s, which slightly different boat, lighter weight, and then the 44s that are big heavy boats, it confused us and then trying to understand how the ORR rating works in that type of situation was a bit uh, confusing as well. But um, we knew it was going to be tight. We knew we had to sail better and harder and faster. And then knowing that it could get rough, the 44s would have an advantage over us in the rough stuff. And if it went light, the 122s would have an advantage of, over us in the light stuff. So when you end up, I mean, at the, at the end of the day, right, you sort of have to throw the the ratings thing out the window anyway, just sail the boat yep. as yep. best as yep. you possibly can, right? Yeah. Well, that's always been our belief, is, is the ratings are the ratings, and if you sail your boat to the rating, you'll do okay, but you have to actually beat the rating. So we look at everything as how can we go faster than what we normally would go faster, and we also know that to win in a race like this, you actually have to push yourself harder than the next guy. This seemed the race to push hard. So let's see, can you take me through the stages for you guys out of Newport to, to here? Yeah, so, you know, we'd been watching the weather and how it was going to shape up and kind of had a game plan, which we'll get into a little bit. But the thought was be conservative at the start so we didn't get messed up and we heard the calling about the current. So we actually were a little bit late at the start, probably the second to last boat over the line, maybe 30, 40 seconds behind everybody, but we didn't let that bother us. Uh, and we pushed hard, and about when the wind quit, we were one of the top three or four boats in, in, in the class at that particular point. And then the wind quit. Then it was about, okay, let's just keep the boat moving generally in the right direction with some kind of speed. Don't worry about rum line, just keep it heading where we wanted it to go. And then as the wind filled in, it push, started pushing us west when we actually wanted to go east, but there was nothing that we could do about that. So that was kind of the the direction we were heading reluctantly a little bit until we got into the Gulf Stream and got enough of, I guess, a, a shift a little bit and then went east and caught that curve going down in the Gulf Stream and headed south and then got pushed back west again, where we would have been, like to have been a little bit more east, but uh, we just took the race in stages. As the wind did something, yeah. uh, constantly keeping in mind that we had to be going approximately in the right direction as fast as we possibly could do it. Yeah, I mean, the, the plan changed really from the get-go because we were expecting right off the start for that breeze to maintain, if not bigger breeze than what we had, and then it ended up going light, and then we ended up farther west than we wanted to be, so we just basically went into a restart mode, and uh, the wind started to come back up, and we started pushing and got in the stream and did a couple of jibes we really didn't plan or want to do in those conditions, but we, we made it happen, and then uh, going into the last you know, phase of the race, it lasts maybe 150 miles. We just had the kite up trying to go deep and fast as we can, getting back down towards the rum line and uh, managed to do that. And the wind shifted around and cruised in uh, past the lighthouse, so. That deep and fast, with the J120 were in that deep fast mode, like kind of cracking the tack line, just yep. sort of shoving that shoulder right. out there. Worked, worked, worked from the, the littlest kite to the middle-sized kite to the biggest kite and yeah. 
deep yeah, we and would fast. Go, and you know, depending on the conditions, if you, if we started with the say the A2 and the wind picked up. We very quickly went to the A1 to save that big kite because we knew we had to have it at the end according to the forecast to lighten up. So we were shifting gears constantly. I don't know how many times the kite. Went yeah, we probably did 20 different ups and downs with the spinnakers and everything like that. So we were yeah, working sure hard. We tear anything or break it, but each time. You know, we put if we could slot a stay sail in there, we'd slot the stay sail in. We just kept pushing as hard as we could. Yeah, I can't tell you how many people have sat here and said, "Yeah, they blew out their A2 like you know yeah. immediately, yeah. right?" Yeah. And so it's really amazing that you have the foresight to do that versus you know this design, that balance of pushing but preservation. Yeah, well, like I, we yeah. we definitely feel like we we pushed through the race, but never i mean we didn't break anything so i think that says like we found that fine line uh and it was talked about i think i made the recommendation let's go with the big kite and somebody was like well if it pipes back up and we lose that thing it's going to make tomorrow a really long day and we stuck with what we what we had going uh, and then there's the issue if we blow the big kite kyle's mom will have an issue with me <laughs> it always goes back to the check yeah. yes it does <laughs> yes it does yeah, so. so um so Cheers to the bow team then yep. for yep. all the spinnaker work. Are you, are you on the bow? Uh, well, we all rotated through pretty well on the bow. I was up there quite a bit. But no, everybody on our crew, so we had actually never all sailed together in a race. I had never raced with other than him and one crew member a single time, but everybody knew what they were doing and we fell into our job. And when something had to get done, nobody was afraid to go up front and, and make it happen. So. Uh, we ripped one spinnaker, just slightly little hole, got it down, got it repaired, got it back up. Everything was pretty smooth in that regard. Actually, so. Well, like, clearly you guys are not sailing double-handed, so um, let's, uh, do you mind running through the, the crew list? Who else is with you yep. on this journey? Right. So when we set out to do this particular event, and we actually started to plan for the 2020 that was canceled, we started reaching out to other potential crew members in addition to some of the existing team that we normally sail with, because we're looking for a specific skill set. First off, they weren't going to get seasick. Two, they had the unique ability to do whatever their task was, either drive, because you've got to have drivers. Are they trimmers? Are they four-deck people? So we actually, Kyle and I are the only two normal crew members on the boat. Everybody else was hand-picked, essentially, for this race. And they all knew each other, and, and they're all J-105 sailors out of Annapolis. And, and their regular J-105 sailors all knew each other. We knew all of them and at various events and regattas. And like I said, I sailed with some of them. So we set out a year ago after Annapolis to Newport, we sat down with this basically team and said, here's what our goal is. We want to win our class going to Bermuda. Here's what I'm going to do to the boat. Here's what we're going to do with this, this sail set. Here's what I need you guys for. Are you interested? And then we did a few races last fall that he actually couldn't make. and got familiar with each other, worked as a team, and then we tried to do one spring event this year and it got canceled. So up until this time, we hadn't been on the boat together as a team, but everybody worked well together as a team. Kyle runs one watch, I run the other watch, and then I kind of split the navigation and I'm also the cook. Um, but each team was built on you know, a driver, a four-deck guy, a trimmer, and then one guy that could pretty much fill in any role on a particular boat, and we did our shifts and then, unlike other races, we shortened our shifts because it was exhausting. So we went yeah. to a three-hour shift rather than a four-hour shift. And everybody worked well together, and that's what made a difference. You guys sound you know what you're doing. We've been doing this a while. <laughs> yeah. So he was born doing it. I got into it when I was about 10 with my dad, and, and we grew up Great Lakes, Chicago Max sailing. Yeah. You know, we've done a lot of stuff, and he and I've done some double-handed yeah. stuff together. Nothing, nothing like this, as long as this one. But for, yeah. for probably about 20 years, we've had some sort of sprit J boat, and they're all more or less the same thing, just bigger. Uh, and some of, I guess, Alan, he sailed with us on our first J80 in 2016. So, I mean, it all transfers up. It's just larger and with a wheel. Yeah. So we've gotten a feel for those boats and how high we can fly the kite, and can we put a staysail up in there? And we got it pretty well dialed in for how hard we can push it in the organization of the whole thing so and we know that we know that you can depower them just by driving deeper yeah. you know if you get in a bit of a reach yeah it loads up pretty quick but if you can just if it, rather than let it round up you just drive it deeper you can feel it coming yeah yeah and then you just drive it deep and keep it going and that's what we did whenever the spinnaker was up yeah so some of that c state um 120 can be a bit of a bear in that kind of craziness right i mean it's a, it's a big 
heavy bow was what, what do you think was kind of the key getting through that initial nasty yeah i mean uh yeah. we for us we're all chesapeake bay sailors for the most part i mean we've done some annapolis to newports on everything so i i summarized it in the beginning being you know one of the few people who have driven through the gulf in the past i was like guys pr pretend you're on the severn river in annapolis in july <laughs> in your dinghy and like five different power boats are going different directions like that's what it's going to be like uh so when we got in the stream I drove, like we really drilled down on the drivers. Only certain people could, you know, keep up with it because it was also nighttime, we couldn't see the kite. So uh, just got a feel for it and like the team worked really well and they were trimming the whole time. Like if the kite was curling, they were bringing it in and, and just focused on the instruments non nonstop to try and keep it going. And then we did keep a, a small stay sail up through the whole time, which helped stabilize the boat. So even if your kite was a bit squirrely, at stay sail and we wanted to keep and even the main was over trimmed a little bit just to keep pressure and keep that boat down in the water rather than hopping up on a wave and scrolling around. He certainly keeps the troll out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kept it down. Yeah. And that's a trick we learned sailing the eighty and the one oh nine if it gets really wild unroll the jib a little bit. Yeah. So did you uh did you insult you have a pad eye on special pad yeah, eye? Special pad eye put on there. Yeah, yeah. we have a pad eye on, on the deck and then we have a spinnaker stay sole on a furler that we'd use but most of the time we actually he picked up an old ratty Genoa stay sail from Bacon's for 200 bucks before the race that we made <laughs> modified a strop on and that's what we put up and sometimes we put it up and if it was too wet we just let it luff because we really didn't care about it and yeah, but it trim it in and pulling most of the time yep. and it kept that bow from wasn't wasn't the prettiest sail plan that the sail makers like, but nobody, uh, nobody but nobody could it. see it except yeah. for us at 20 knots in the You're Gulf. So So how about uh, your entry into Bermuda? What was um, you mentioned? You guys finished uh, what time of the day? Oh, uh, we finished at 1 a.m. Yeah. 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 What yeah. was the, I mean that that sort of that that moment from the finish to here? What does that feel like? Well, there's. First off, you're just For those who have never ha happy that, um, I mean, the exuberance that you finished it because it is a monumental event. I mean, it's, it's a big sailboat race. It's one of the most well-known sailboat races. So, you know, the fact that you finished it, your crew's safe, the boat's not all busted up, um, you're exhausted because, you know, you're, even if you have slept, you're not sleeping well. So it's just, it's a sense of relief. But for us, we knew we did pretty well because I'm finishing with big boats. And every time we've done a race where we've done well, we've known we'd finish with the big boys that should be ahead of us. I mean, we got rolled over at 10 miles from the finish by a Baltic 52. <laughs> you know, like, okay, okay, if we're here and he's here, that tells us something. So there was that sense of, and a sense of satisfaction and, and a bit of pride. I mean, you put a lot of work in this event. It's not one you take lightly. So and the fact that he and I did it and we don't get to sail as much as we used to because he's got a job, I'm retired. so. Um, it was just nice to be there again and, and knowing that you yeah. did well. And the crew, it's again, some of them had never done an offshore race. Um, I think only two really had done offshore. They were quite proud and, and everybody felt together as, a, as a good as a team. So it was a nice feeling. Yeah, and when, one thing when you're coming down the channel and it's the middle of the night, you, you almost don't have a chance to take it all in because it's just a bunch of lights and a bunch of buoys and it's a very different channel than we're used to up on the Chesapeake Bay. Uh, but you do have some time to decompress on the way in and we had a beer or two and then we anchored out here off the club for an hour and had some of these and that's when I think everybody really had it settle in and yeah. we had made it and they were looking at the club for the first time. It was, uh, it was a good yeah, time. We did have to wait a while for the results to get posted up because they were a bit confusing. So we didn't know we had officially had first until what, 7, 7.30 last night? Yeah. So. Yeah. So we knew we were there. We did a math in our head and said we got it. But until it's put up on the board, you can't you can't start celebrating. But we would have been happy just we were happy just finishing, and we were pretty sure we had a podium spot. So it was just which which one. Yeah. 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 And now you're gonna yeah. stick around for the uh, for the awards. Where were you planning That's, out to anyway? Well, he was sticking around to go home. He brought a jacket in the back. I noticed when we were getting off the boat. He's got a whole garment bag. bag. Yeah. <laughs> I and that I'm, back there's a little cockpit back there, and I said. I got a garment bag back there, guys, um, and it I'm, helped keep the stern down. Yeah, yeah, so. I'm texting my fiance, having her meet up with the delivery crew member tonight to send me a jacket and tie, yeah. so I can. It probably qualifies go as there. movable ballast. But, <laughs> so. It's almost like the yacht club should have a have a rack of. They bar should. Yeah. 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 A tuxedo or suit jacket place would do great here. A rental yeah. shop.
Well, excellent. Thanks, guys, for your time. Yeah, um, thank you. It was great to meet you. Nice to meet you. And, well, I guess you got to come back and do this again two years from now, or what's the plan? We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we gotta... oh, we're definitely Marblehead to Halifax, Halifax is being year, talked yeah. about one we haven't done yet. And keep keep going. We've got a good streak with the first time we put a boat in a race winning our division. So we're trying to keep that keep that rolling with, after yeah, this we one. We picked so. up. We won on the 109 Annapolis to Newport. Then we bought this boat. We won it that year. Last year, I think we were seventh or whatever it was, and then first on, on this one. So trying to keep well, that track record going. Keep Cheers. Streak, keeping the streak alive. Yep. 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 Thank you. You wouldn't happen to have any more ginger beer. That's all wrong. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Mine's my delicious. Wife tells, my wife tells me I have a heavy pour. It's e extra stormy. Look at how what? dark that is compared no, to your guys. No, no, no. Well, so that's no, the color yours. Of the cup. Yeah, the cup oh. changes colors. Yeah, so, so uh, the colder it is, the I'm still it gets, pretty yeah. sure I got a lot of rum in it. Perhaps. Uh, Light, lightweight, you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's better. Oh, there you go.